Hello everyone, this is Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist and welcome to another Scrivener video for the Family History Writer. Today we're going to take a, take a look at a little tool called inline annotations. I've talked in the past how important it is when you're writing your family history to stay in the moment and continue to, to stick with the creative process of writing. Far too often we get distracted by the research. Um, we're, we could be writing a scene and we realize that we want to check a fact. And so, you know, we go to check a fact and it pulls us away from the writing. Or we, we realize we need some more social history. And so we start Googling and away we go again. Um, we need more description or more detail. and Or we just maybe haven't found the right phrase or the right word. And so we spend all our time in rewriting the same paragraph rather than just making a note with, within the scene that we're writing and moving on and continuing with that writing process. Well, inline annotations is a fantastic tool to keep you focused on the project of hand, and that is writing. This with inline annotations, which is merely just a note that you're placing within the text, it just really says, here's, here's my issue with this scene, make myself a note, and keep moving forward. And then we, and I'll show you how then we can deal with those inline annotations later in small, manageable chunks outside of that writing process. So let's take a, take, take a look at inline annotations. So like I said, it's basically a note that we place within the text of our document. So I have a couple already made for you here. You can see them. Um, in this case, uh, I have highlighted um, uh, these two names, which were the witnesses of godparents at uh, my, my great-grandfather's baptism. Um, I've put a little code in here for myself, which is AD, which means add document. I want to add the actual um, baptismal document at this point. Um, now, when you create the inline annotation, it just simply makes this lovely bubble around the text that you want to make into a note. You can also add text, so you don't necessarily have to just take the text within your, your scene or chapter, but you can add text as well. This is an example of how I, I highlighted text already in my chapter. Um, over here, um, I believe down here um, I put Paulina and I put CD Paulina and that just means character development Paulina and that means I want to take a little closer look at who this woman might be and add a little um, detail and description to, to uh, show the character of Paulina. Now you'll notice with um, these little bubbles they are right squished up against um, the the preceding words. And that's because the bubble basically takes the place of your of a space. So and the reason for this also being is that when you go to compile your your document and export it out of Scrivener, you can tell Scrivener to exclude all your inline annotations. So you don't have to go back through and clean this all up and get rid of them all if you don't want to. You can tell Scrivener at the end, exclude all the inline annotations, and it'll strip them all away. Now, when it strips them away, basically it leaves a space. So this is why I'm telling you, resist the urge to put a space on either side of this inline annotation. Otherwise, when it strips it away, you're going to have several spaces left, and you don't want that. So that's, in a nutshell, um, the inline annotations and what they look like. Now let's let's make a couple so you can see how this works. Uh, so let's go up to the top here, and we have uh, Michaela and, and Malgaraza who have taken up residence in Serles. So I'm just going to put my cursor right here, and I'm going to go Format, Inline Annotation, click, and then I'm just going to begin typing, and I'm going to put in here S-E-T on Celez. And this is basically a note to myself that I want to have more setting for this little town in Poland. Okay, that simple. Um, let's do another one. Uh, the peasants lived in small cottages. So again, I just perhaps want to do another S-E-T my little Q. Now you can do it this way. 
SET. Um, and you can just, you can then highlight this, format, inline annotations, and it'll give it to you that way as well. So there's a lot of varying degrees depending on how, how um, easy, you know, whichever method you wish to take. Um, let's also, let's do another one. Let's highlight some, some text. Um, so let's take a look at um, uh, Village of Chotam. And let's say I want to do some setting for Chotam. So I'm going to highlight this, format, inline annotation, really simple. And then I can just stick in here if you want, SET. And I've got setting in there again. Okay. I like to capitalize these little. Now, these are cues to me. Now, I've used set three times. And basically, over here, I've created myself a little table. And set basically means setting. It's the cue to me that I want to add more setting here. And I'm, I've just created this little table on, on some of the things that and you can create your own table based on your own your own needs. Um, this is what I've done for myself. So CF to means means I want to check a fact. SH means I want to add some social history. Um, RRR is research. EEE is editing. ZZZ is everything else. Um, and these three actually I kind of uh, got from Scrivener for Dummies by Gwen Hernandez. Um, this is something that she suggested, and then I just kind of took it a little bit further and, and created myself this table. So I've got pick here for picture, CD for character development, set for setting, and PD for plot development. And I'm going to show you later how this will come in handy when you are looking to, uh, to go through your text and find these annotations. Now we can also uh, change the color. So if you don't like my funky pink, you can go up here to tools, go into options and appearance and click on editor and come down here to annotation text. And the default color is red. So that's what, when you first go into annotations, that's what it's going to be set to. Um, so if you'd like to use the traditional red, um, you can go ahead and do that. Um, let's say we're going to go with blue and apply and hit OK. And now it changes everything that you have in an annotation and everything you do from here on out in blue. Now, you can also um, apparently, and I say apparently, do split annotations. And split annotations is I could take this annotation and I could split it in half and I could make half of it one color and half of another color and the bubble will actually split. Um, if you have Mac, give it a try. See if it works for you. I think there's a bug with the Windows program, and actually I know there is. Um, there's been a recent update with, with, win, with the Windows. Uh, so if you haven't done that, go do that, because up until the update, a lot of these things with annotations I couldn't do. So with that recent update, we were able, we were able, to, do, we were able to do a lot more with annotations. But I'm still unable to do the split annotation and show it in two different colors. Um, let's take a look at um, finding now these annotations. You've got a 50 or 100,000 word document. How are you going to handle this now? How are you going to go through and find these all? Again, you because you have your little table here, you could proceed by now, okay, let me handle all the check fact ones. Let me handle all the social history. Let me handle all the research then I'll handle all the editing. So you can break it down into manageable chunks that way. You can also break it down and I'll show you. So we're going to go into edit and we'll go to find and we're going to go find by formatting. So here you can see I have inline annotation. Um, you can use this find button for, for many things, but let's do inline annotations. Now in here, I can easily put in the text that I'm looking to find. And because you're not likely going to remember all the text that you uh, have inserted in your inline annotations, this is where your table comes in handy. So let's just say I want to look at all the inline annotations that have to do with setting. And I can do that in this selected document, or I can do it in all the documents. So everything that I have over here, it will scan. Or I can just go chapter by chapter. So that's a great way to break it down into manageable, manageable sections. So just here by hitting Next, 
it will, and I'll scroll a bit because it's hiding behind it, it, it highlights the very first one that it finds in the page. So now you can deal with that, okay? Then if you hit next, it goes to the next one and on and on. And then once you've dealt with all the setting ones, now you can go back and say you want to address the social history ones or you want to do all your editing or you want to look at all the plot development. A fantastic way to be able to find them and deal with them in a very structured manner and you're not going to be, you know, haphazardly all over the place. It's a, it's a, it's a great organizational tool. Now let me show you just if you want to get rid of them. Again, I mentioned earlier, it will strip them away when you when you go to compile it at the end. But, you know, I don't know, like, if you're like me, I want to be able to see it the way I want to see it when it's going to when it's going to come out. So I would probably want to um, get rid of them all. I probably wouldn't wait for the compile to strip them away. So the easiest way to do that, and it really depends on how you put them in as to how you want to take them out, at least for me. So here I actually added text. So I want to get rid of all that text. So I'm just going to quite easily uh, highlight that, hit delete and it's gone, okay? But in this case, where I actually have text that I want left in, I'm gonna just put my cursor in the bubble, go back to format inline annotation, and hit highlight, and it takes it all out. And then all I have to do is just back out this little AD that I added in there, okay? Very, very easy to do to put them in and to take them out. So that, um, in a nutshell, is, um, annotations. One other thing that I want to, to note to you that you can only do these annotations uh, while you are in this, this editor mode. Um, if you go into the full screen mode, annotations isn't available to you, but comments is. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about comments and we're going to move on to comments and footnotes, citations and bibliographies. All of that's coming in the next couple of videos because they're all sort of um, intertwined. But uh, just so you can see, you can also easily change. So I have um, just put my cursor inside this annotation. I'm going to go back to the format and I'm going to go to convert. And so just so you can see here, we can actually convert that inline annotation into a footnote or into a comment. So let me just click on inline annotation to inspect or comment. And you can see now it has changed all my inline annotations into comments. Where did they go? You click over here. They're all over here on the side. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't really like to see that messiness on the page with all the highlights and bubbles going on, you can have them all over here off to the side. When we get into the next video, I'll show you actually how we can create a comment because we won't have time to do all of that in this video. But hopefully that gets you started to see how inline annotations are a fantastic tool to, to keep you focused on your writing and to keep your, your edits and your the additional research and social history that you have to go back and add to your stories later. It's a great tool to keep all of that organized and to keep you organized um, and continuing forward with writing those family history stories. So if you, um, I have other videos, so there's a link below. Please be sure to take a look at all the other videos that we've created thus far for Scriv Scrivener for the Family History Writer. If you haven't purchased Scrivener yet, there's also a link to that. Um, it's a fantastic tool very cheap, one-time price of $40, and you're going to really use it for the rest of your life. It's, it's a really fantastic tool. So that's it for today. That is uh, Scribner for the Family History Writer from Lynn at the Armchair Genealogist.